So now at this stage I'm just kind of drawing, uh, making, kind of squaring the shapes up but getting interesting patterns and directions with the light. I'm not ready to bring in any detail at this point. Um, softening some shadows and giving depth to other shadows where I want to emphasize. Trying to work the whole thing around. When I see little mistakes that were not done intentionally but are interesting, then I try to take advantage of that. Okay. And the clay's not quite so damp and gummy. But trying to keep these geometrical shapes going on. Interesting geometries. Especially places like the eyebrows. Opportunity to it really does help to kind of square things out and box things up a bit so that your shapes don't become confused and muddled. <clears throat> the interesting thing about dynamic symmetry Yes, if you have, I don't believe that the the great masters were putting calipers on everything and and using dynamic symmetry grids and such. I think that beauty inherently has dynamic symmetry. And if you're able to make, make it beautiful, then the dynamic symmetry will automatically occur. Now, if you're stumped as to what is not working, then you can put your grid, your, your calipers to it, and see the flaw. But usually, that requires looking at the whole entire matter anyway. So... The, the, the way to handle that issue of the beauty and what's wrong with it is to step back and look at it and turn it and step back. Don't keep working on it. If it's not progressing, then stop working on it, step back and look at it and think. So the universe centers around the king. Now the king is coercive. The shadow king is coercive and seeks to emasculate. And all the fancy stuff in a curl really mostly is towards the ends of the hair. I'm going to mash this coil up and just make it a simple shape. It's on the back side anyway. There's no reason to go in for that kind of time. We've got economy to think about. And it's hollows create a negative feeling. So we're, we'll 
boss that hollow out. And we'll just simplify these shapes. And then for the sake of brevity, we'll just put the interesting stuff down towards the bottom here. And that will make it a simpler project and a doable project. I feel like Gordon Ramsay's always talking to me. Make it, make it simpler. You're giving them too much. You're trying to do too much. It's fun to show off your skills, but it's also so using a bigger tool. I'll box up these shapes. really need to bring my ego into check. We start doing these things again. Simple boxes. You know, bigger shapes, smaller shapes, smaller, smaller, smaller. So the beautiful will always be dynamically symmetrical. So if you go for beauty, you won't have to worry about dynamic symmetry because it, it will be there to present itself to you. Now, in here, this is all where I want all the eye action stuff to happen. Again, this shape is similar to that shape, repetition with variation. So it's always good to have a little repetition with variation. And then counter, that, that shape is countered to that shape. That shape is countered to this shape. Simplify the, the curves, the masses. And so I'm basically critiquing my own work and making changes as I Good God, man, you're trying to do too much. Nobody's looking at the back anyway. Don't put a lot of time and effort into that. Yeah, work like a chef. Like there's somebody who wants to be served up a meal, a feast for the eyes. Okay, from every angle, that's why you keep turning, 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 turning. That shape is too too similar. So we'll take that shape and slip it. That line of incidence. And that line. Now we can slip it, make it more interesting. Now I've got some nice, interesting shapes to work with here. I'll pull that out. Let's put a little more mass in here. A little too, too parallel. Parallel just kills your work. Yeah, just kind of like work on some ge geometrical shapes. Starting here.
creating interesting shadows and lights. I don't want to get too round yet. I want to create interesting shapes. Okay, nice, strong, solid shapes. That's all I want. I'm a big fan of Edmund Burke. Philosopher. We use your spatula to keep those shapes simple. Anybody can do the job, but to do the job and get paid to do it and make a profit out is the trick. So one of the tricks of the trade is to block things out right, easily. If you look at George Bridgman's anatomy books, he blocks everything out. There. Simple shapes first. And every time I find something parallel, I work to... There's a parallel line there that is just... not doing it. Okay. I'm keeping it simple on the top. Only where things start to change direction do you want to put in any accents. Like here, this curl changes direction, so I can put in a little accent there. Okay, hard and soft edges. So I want to soften this. We'll make that curl almost blend in with the neck. There. There. Fun shapes. I'm working with big shapes and going to smaller shapes. Okay. the smaller shapes more important than the bigger shapes. Smaller shapes are supporting supporting actors. There's no such thing as negative space. We hear art teachers talking about negative space. There's negative shapes, but there's not negative space. It's space and solid. As a sculptor, you're primarily concerned about space and solid. What is seen and what is not seen. What is not seen is just as important as what is seen. That would be what you call the negative shape. That which is not seen is just as important as what is seen. Again, take advantage of Anything that could be interesting, but don't make it more important than the overall shape. Domination and subordination is the name of the game. Now, within the shape, how can I break that up to make it more interesting? We know that parallel lines are death, so you want to create those lines so that they are not parallel, and that they slip in, in relationship to one another. I'll dig too, too deep, too early. Keep this moving. Again, slip this line. This movement moves in here. You want to always like rotate around. And yeah, repetition and variation. The fancy stuff goes in down here at the bottom. And counter that movement, not coming too, too deeply in too early. <coughs> Actually make that so that there's no line in between the hair. Lost and found, lost and found. It's visual poetry.
you know, radiate those lines. We don't want to put too much attention on the back here. But it's got to be attractive and not treated like it's neglected. So these are Baroque, going in the Baroque direction. A little too parallel. When the brush is too soft and the hand is too rough, you can take a little piece of clay with water and model with the clay. Sometimes the wire tool is too Nice crisp edge there. So, dipping the clay in the water. I can smooth this out a little bit. Need my brush. Establish that line. You can also pre-soak the clay in a cup so that you can brush on the slip like a slip. It's gotten a little soggy up in here. I'm going to my little, my nice little point. Okay. 